Hey everybody, what's up? Leonardo2003 here, and today we're back to review episode 5A of Rise of the TMNT, The Fast and the Furriest. If you've been paying any attention lately, you'd know that this originally was scheduled to be episode 5B, but it seems they have switched the official order around with Mascot Melee. With this show, it seems you could just flip-flop any episode around, and you'd be 99% okay continuity-wise. But that's enough of that. I'll save the rants that I have for this series after the first season is over. The episode starts off with Donnie presenting his brothers with his newest masterpiece. His brothers are guessing that it's gotta be the drill that he used in episode 2B. The show does a decent job of referencing little things from past episodes, but so far it is really lacking a solid ongoing plot. It's hard to do these breakdowns sometimes when the episodes are just so random. As Turtles fans, we're all used to having an ongoing plot throughout each season. Even the 1987 series had a pretty obvious ongoing plot. It's hard to tell if this show has planted any seeds for plot since the first episode. But anyways, Donnie says this is not a drill, and unveils his work of art. But nothing is behind the curtains. What was supposed to be there was the first official turtle vehicle for Rise of the TMNT, the Turtle Tank. Donnie pimped out the moon buggy that they got in episode 4B, Repo Mantis. So who's the culprit? Who stole the turtle tank? We then cut to the turtle tank speeding through the streets of New York, and of course, Master Splinter is behind the wheel. He is absolutely crazy in this series, and I can't wait to see how they develop him. He's so short and stubby that he needs arm extenders and fish bowls to be able to drive the thing. The turtles are scouting the city, thinking about who could have possibly taken the tank. They're pretty worried, considering whoever stole it knows exactly where their lair is as well. The first person that comes to mind is someone that they've known for years, April. They break into her apartment to confront her, as she's just chilling with mayhem. Look at the turtles, looking around her apartment thinking the tank is actually in there. So comedic. I guess they could be looking for the keys but I'm sure Donnie developed it to be a push to start. And finally, the first character that we ever saw in Rise has finally shown its face again. We barely get to see this little mutant cat, although it seemed that it'd play a big role in the story of the show. We'll just have to wait and see. And of course, we all want to see how the turtles in April met. I'm sure that they'll show it in a flashback episode at some point. I mean, they kind of have to, right? They've known each other for years, according to what Donnie just said, and she appears to be a young adult, possibly 19 years old. That's my guess, at least. April then gets out her bat, and smacks all of the turtles out her window onto the ground. Not only did the turtles break her door, they accused her of stealing the tank, which really pissed her off. She beat them up pretty damn quickly, too. The turtles then agree that the next suspect has to be a mutant, so Leonardo suggests that they go to the mutant pizza place. Now this is where I have a few big problems. Raphael uses his hand to activate a power and open up a portal to a mutant pizza shop. Where, what, when, why, and how? This was never shown. We have no clue how the turtles discovered this place, or how Raph found that he had the power to open up the portal, or if any of his brothers have this power too. Nothing. That's inexcusable. I can't believe that they just randomly did this out of nowhere. But anyways, they enter the pub and start interrogating the mutants. The skeleton mutant, who comes off to be the leader of the pub, was actually kind of funny. Once the turtles say that they're not undercover cops, they are immediately kicked out. Donnie then remembers that he installed the shopping cart protocol in the turtle tank, which locks up the wheels when the tank goes a beyond set perimeter without Donnie's knowledge. Splinter attempts to fix the problem, only to be found by meat sweats. Our first villain to appear for a second time, and I couldn't be happier to see it being Meat Sweats. Splinter then asks him for a ride uptown, and Meat Sweats agrees, because his main objective is to eat Splinter, or any other mutant for that matter. The turtles finally spot the tank, and then they spot Splinter hopping into Meat Sweats' food truck. This episode, Leo and Raph both refer to Splinter as dad. It's a nice touch. Meat Sweats literally starts buttering up Splinter while he's eating the silverfish sushi. Splinter ends up telling Meat Sweats that he has four turtle sons, just as they arrive to confront the situation. 
The red, blue, orange, purple joke here really made me laugh. I find Splinter calling them by their colors hysterical. Splinter panics and says that they must leave now, as they can't find out that he took the turtle tank. They take off, so now it's turtle tank time. This is where the Fast and the Furious pun comes from. It's pretty comical, as Splinter is the one on the gas pedal and Meat Sweats is steering. The turtle tank has it all, from a bowling ball launcher to a soft serve ice cream machine. Donnie then informs Raphael that he is the captain and to get in the driver's seat. The back and forth dialogue between Meat Sweats and Splinter is absolutely hilarious and probably some of the funniest stuff that we've heard so far. They strike the tank with a few harpoon chains, but the chase is still on. When Splinter says, don't snitch on me bro, to Meat Sweats, it didn't even sound like him at all, but it was so funny. Did any of you guys notice that that sounded nothing like Splinter? Meat Sweats unveils that he has a bunch of smaller mutants locked up inside of a truck. Wow, these Uskitos have mutated like at least 40 people so far, judging by all of these mutants that we've seen lately. Meat Sweats takes out a mutant snake and uses his tendril to suck his ooze and ability away from it. That power that Meat Sweats has is so badass. I really hope that the writers don't waste his character. It turns out it was a spitting cobra, so now Meat Sweats is spitting venomous ooze from his mouth. While this high speed chase is happening, Leo and Mikey are both hanging on to the chains connecting the two vehicles. That's pretty crazy. They're able to dodge all of the venom shots, but some gets on the chains, causing them to fizzle away. But Mikey then comes up clutch with his Kusari Fungo, using Power Whip Jitsu to reattach to Meat Sweats' truck. At least that's what Mikey called it when he used the power, he called the Mystic Whip Power Whip Jitsu. Now it's time for Leo to put his Mystic Weapon to good use. After a few fails, Leonardo refocuses and opens up a portal. The other end of the portal is right behind Meat Sweats, causing his own venom to hit him in the face. So I guess Leonardo's portal ability not only makes him be able to open up a portal right in front of him, but I guess he gets to control where the other portal is too. It's kinda like there's an enter portal and an exit portal. Meat Sweats then releases all of the little mutants in an effort to get away, along with releasing Master Splinter. Donatello begins to scold Splinter like he's his daddy, telling him that he'll be watching the Long Division and memorizing pie channels as a part of his punishment. And that was the end of the episode. Although being another really wacky episode, this one was pretty amazing. Seeing Splinter out of the lair for the first time was so awesome and so hilarious. He appears to be much more immature than the turtles, which says a lot since these turtles are the youngest ones yet. Him being so afraid of the turtles catching him for taking the turtle tank was one of my favorite aspects of this episode. Of course, if you can't accept this new version of Splinter, then you won't like this episode too much. But if you made it through Down With The Sickness, then you'll definitely love this one. The 11 minute time for this episode fit the plot pretty well. The only thing that they should have added was a little bit of a backstory on how the turtles found out about the mutant pub place. That was just ridiculous, I still don't understand how they can just throw that at us without any explanation. In Newsworthy, Warren Stone did a similar thing going to that mystic black magic power shop. But that was a little bit more excusable considering it was just Warren Stone. These are the turtles, we should have gotten this backstory. Anyways, Meat Sweats was a fantastic choice of villain for this episode. His back and forths with Splinter were hysterical. Meat Sweat seems to be a second tier villain for Rise, being a tier under Draxum. He's a serious villain, considering he wants to eat every mutant that he sees. When you actually think about it, that's so dark and diabolical. But he's also a little foolish too, which balances out his character pretty nicely. I really just hope that we can get an ongoing storyline for Rise of the TMNT soon. Most of these episodes have been nothing but pretty random and totally having nothing to do with an overall story. We all want an overarching story and we haven't seen it yet. It's going to make doing these episode reviews a little bit more difficult if there's no ongoing plot at all. We'll just have to wait and see and do a lot of hoping and crossing our fingers. Alright everybody, that pretty much concludes the review. Next review and next video upload will be my review of episode 5B Mascot Melee. 
and then we'll be all caught up for every Rise of the TMNT episode that's been released, and that's a pretty good feeling. I've got a few other awesome videos planned. One is for the Rise of the TMNT comic book, another one is discussing all of the TMNT intro theme songs, so I'm sorry for all of my viewers that aren't as into Rise of the TMNT, even though if you made it this far in the video, you probably are pretty into Rise of the TMNT. But I'll definitely have some more variant videos coming, more on other incarnations of TMNT. I know some of you guys might only like the 2003 series, or a lot of you guys might only like the 2012 series. So I'll have some more videos out that cater to you guys too. So thank you guys all very much for watching. It means so much if you made it through all 11 minutes of this video. That's amazing, and that means so much to me. Thank you all for the support, everybody, and stay tuned because I'll be reviewing Mascot Melee in the next few days. Peace out, everybody.